Good evening, YouTube. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is Greg Ovens with me here. We, for those of you that are confused as to what in the world are you doing here, not in the woods, the videos are pre-edited and posted in the premiere mode, which means they are, we filmed this in July, the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Thanks for watching, guys. We have much appreciated. And don't forget, when you're watching them, to leave it in the comments below every single video. There's a $1,000 prize or all of my gear, a whole set of all my gear, which is like $3,000 worth of stuff, will be given away at the end of the 30 Day Survival Challenge. And we're gonna do we we're gonna do a giveaway today, but with everything else that went on, um, we'll do another live stream before Greg goes back to Canada. So make sure you leave in the comments below Greg's video and my videos. Hey, I'm watching all your videos on the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Anything to that sort. So when we go back through to count to see if you've watched every single one of the videos and left that comment, I will be able to tally it up, find the right person who has done that will randomly choose them and make sure they left that comment and all the ones and you'll have a chance to win that thousand dollars or all of my gear so yeehaw and let's see what else oh the gear video is running late but i did make a gear blog it's linked in the description below every one of the videos and go to my you uh on any one of the videos of the third day survival challenge check out the gear blog it takes you over to my website and has a breakdown of all the gear that we had out there if you see something is missing, leave it in the comments below there, and I will add it on. So there's links to all the gear from our sponsors, um, and anywhere you can get them, even if it's just stuff that I bought on Amazon, including the computer, uh, the cameras we used out there. Everything's linked in the gear blog, so you can see all the gear we had. And I think that just about does it. Uh, thanks for joining us here tonight. Yeah. Greg, joining us here from Canada, came all the way down. I picked him up the other day in uh, Portland. He got in real late because they made, you know, look at him. They made him do one of those random checks, you know. Go figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, that's the third time now. Yeah. Secondary, missed my plane. But, yeah. So, had to take the next plane. But, you see, somebody already said, well, why don't you get a haircut? Well, I guess I wouldn't have had that problem if I did, eh? He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't be Greg if he cut his hair. You, ever, oh. you guys ever hear the story of Samson and Delilah there? Yeah. She <laughs> talked him into cutting his hair, and what happened? Then they captured him, gouged out his eyes, and imprisoned him, and made him middle grain for his life. Uh, it, Greg wouldn't be Greg. If, I, I was thinking just a trim would be. Well, you know, i got to get a trim. Yeah, but it's like, you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I was just it. joking with you. So but, uh, I've watched yeah. every one of it did so far. Okay, what's, we're going to go back. And what's start your answering. favorite slingshot? I'm only going to go back a little way. So if you left a question, uh, go and leave it again. Or now that I'm behind the, uh, the camera here, I can uh, change the pick the I can pick the questions up. Um, how's the truck? Truck's doing good, right? Is it? Um, the, the truck's not doing so well, great what anymore. To, what happened to the pulley? <laughs> Well, the power steering pump went. So it was the you power know, steering pump this whole power, time? power steering pump completely went. And actually, the shaft broke right off it, and the pulley came right off eventually after I dropped you up. Remember we lost our steering when I drove right. you back to the airport? Oh, yeah? So you didn't so even make it home from that? Well, I drove it strong arm for quite a while, replaced the power steering pump. but uh, Oh, that was a little bit of a spoiler alert then. <laughs> how, how hard it was to get me back to the airport at the end there. I almost... Yeah, almost didn't do it, but that doesn't spoil the. It, we lived, obviously. We didn't get eaten by bears. And uh, for those of you just tuning in, thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you leave it in the comments below all the videos that you're watching every episode, so you can win that thousand bucks or all my gear. And next, um, we'll do another live stream before Greg goes back, yeah. and we'll do a giveaway for everybody's that that's been leaving it in the comments below, saying I'm watching every video. We're gonna start doing some live streams until the end of the. Um, the whole 30 days survival the challenge airs just randomly picking people that are leaving that in the comments to give away stuff like my wazoo firestar necklace wazoo has donated like 10 of those and some viking whetstones we got some uh, a couple of pieces of gear from everybody that uh, all the sponsors there and if you guys are shopping for Christmas supplies this cyber monday and this weekend make sure you hit those sponsors links if you've seen our gear and check out the gear blog link below so they're, all of our sponsors are giving away gear for like 20% off. Huge, huge sale. Best time of year to purchase that stuff that you guys have been looking for. Mm -hmm. Zach and Greg, did you go get a chance to take a shower before you... <laughs> yeah, I didn't jump on the plane smelling like wood smoke. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got all cleaned up. We got some great pictures of Greg all 
cleaned up and looking sharp. And it's like, <laughs> that's actually the little bubble that's on his channel. Uh, for those of you who haven't gone over there to watch his videos yet, they are rocking the views. He's doing great. Uh, I'm editing his videos uh, at my studio at home with our new um, new editor guy. Me and him working together on editing Greg's videos as well as my own. That's why we're taking this yeah. week off here because I needed a break. You can see the little dark circles under oh, my eyes. He's from... working hard on the <laughs> editing. And I, I'll tell you, like, I, for one, uh, am really happy with the way the editing's going. I like the music in the scenes. The, the drone footage has been spectacular. I think everybody will agree with that. And remember, uh, I was always complaining out there, like, how worried I was. Like, I'm not sure if we're showing the majesty of it. But mm -hmm. I, I think you guys' comments are me, show me that, you know. I think everybody's impressed with yep. uh, the scenery, for sure. And the, and the editing has just been great. Uh, how long have you been interested in survival situations? Greg's been at it his whole life. Yeah, since about 10, I started studying outdoor survival. Actually, you might be interested. One of my first books that I bought when I was maybe 11, 12 was uh, Bradford Angier, uh, How to Stay Alive in the Woods. And then I had Tom Brown books and all the survival books from all the, the writers and uh then I got into studying plants as I got a little older because I realized that it's when you're in a survival situation, you got to know your plants. You can't just expect to catch uh, fish all the time or uh, you can't survive on meat basically either. So you have to know your plants. Make sure you get a good plant book and study up on that because... If you want to know how much weight we lost, you have to wait till the end. We are in Rutland, Vermont at my parents' house. And we did a little, uh, we got some more videos that are going to come out after this series. We did some little nostalgia fishing. I took them around to the my stomping grounds, the places of the river. I had a rope swing in and spent all my time growing up and diving for golf balls to sell to the golfers there. And um, Greg managed to catch a fish. Yeah, I caught my first fish today in Vermont. How'd uh, you like the Wadobo? Yes, and, that, and somebody's <laughs> asking, the Wadobo was great. I, I think it's a great spice myself um yeah and i mean zach he swears by it but yeah i, mean, I, I didn't did, use it i actually much, don't so. eat it at home you don't no i don't you really oh. could just i don't know why i just i don't bother to like i mean every once in a while i bust it out and like surprise some friends with like hey let's what we're watching a movie and i make them like wadobo popcorn which mm -hmm. is pretty good you know and yeah. uh, or i'll make like uh or if i go fishing though in my um I bought a boat series. I, I used all the fish that I did catching coach cooks with Wadobo on it for those, and it's great. But I, well, I loved it on the fish, and I mean, yeah. even on the golfer. Uh, I just don't feel like know. having it a steak when I'm having a steak at home. Uh, yeah, but you know, like if you got a good prime rib steak, I mean, you just want to cook it right. You don't want nothing on it. But that's the way I am with a good steak. But the oh. hammer, the hammer, and the oxyalum, all of simple shot slingshots that I sell. And or they sell are twenty percent off. You know, check out those gear link that gear video link below. You guys, they're just coming in. That it's got everything you need to know about the stuff that we have out there. The gear video will fall later. It's just it was such a mondo project to edit. Like our videos are so easy to edit. Greg doesn't. Uh, somebody asked, does he get a final say? Um, we don't have the ability to transfer data back and forth quick enough. He he doesn't get the final say. Good question. Um, right. I just bust them out. We bust them out. And that's yeah, and it's turned out. So. It takes so much work to do it. To that we're finishing all of the videos. And that's why my videos are almost always late because I put every cent of time I have into them before I post them, and until I'm happy with them. So. But the job's been excellent, so I don't second guess anything. Anyways. Yeah. So, you know. Um, so it's a surprise for him. That's kind of a treat, right? Well, like, yeah. And it's, I mean, like, it's it, not like you have to watch a <laughs> poor version of it that I send you and then evaluate it. And, and no. I'm like, so he, he there might no. be some things he, he would have left out. Well, we, like we didn't the G string thing. Yeah, like the G string <laughs> thing. I did, ex but I wanted to expose him on the G string thing because some people were like, hey, that's a G string he's wearing. And I'm like, so I finally had to like point it out in the video. I used a clip that I had cut out of a previous one. And showed me pointing at him going, it's just ha, a paracord for a belt, but yeah. The way it slipped up. The way it, it looked, slipped. It, yeah, yeah. It looked like he's, you know, so we have been editing that out of all the videos for days. And then we, <laughs> you know, so many comments were popping up. I put it in, like, pointing at it and pointing out the fact that it was not a G-string. It's just his paracord belt. <laughs> well, that's um, okay. Um, the, um, we had a great time. 
Yeah. And we're, we're working on some new great stuff, visiting my old stomping grounds here and trying to knock out a couple videos to air after. And then, uh, you know, oh, we never said the channel name. So that'll make sure you go and watch Greg's videos. Uh, ovens. Ovens, Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. It's linked so, below all of my videos. Yeah, so you can find it. But, just, uh, and they're doing really good. You have one video that's, yeah, it's, which is like almost unheard of. That yeah. Somebody starts a channel, has five videos, and they have one that popped over 100 and 60 160 and probably even 170 today because we've been fishing. Yeah. Yeah, Greg got his first trout here in Maine. We were going after catfish, and of course he catches. Vermont. Uh, oh yeah, we got uh, in Vermont here. He catches. Uh, we're going after catfish, and he catches a trout. Yeah, I've never caught a catfish in my life, so here we go back to this little creek, Zach stomping grounds, and I catch a trout. Well, that's all I catch at home. So you don't I need just... to comment in all of Greg's videos to win the major prize of the thousand dollars or the gear thing. But for those of you that are commenting there, we'll do another live stream before Greg's leaves and we'll come up with some prize thing to do there and we'll start drawing people from it. We have like 10 items from each of the sponsors that we're going to be giving away, like the Wazoo Firestar necklaces and stuff. And we're going to start doing more live streams before the end of the series through December so that we can get you guys some free Christmas presents. So if you're leaving any comment whatsoever, it doesn't even have to be I'm watching every episode. I will go through, I'll find the person that the random generator picks, and I'll check to see if they've left those comments, and that will be the person that wins $1,000. Everybody else, um, when we're just looking to give away one random thing from the sponsors, we have like 100 items during the live streams. will just be any comment and stuff. So if you're leaving a nice comment, I love your videos, that'll count. I'll count it. You don't have to go back and leave I'm watching every episode. Just in general, you got to at least leave I'm watching every episode or some form of that in the videos to win the $1,000 or the full set of all my gear. I feel like we have to repeat repeating that off a lot, but um, do you become friends? Both of you were doing alone. Uh, yeah, we, did we hang say, out a lot at yeah, boot camp. Yeah, we did. Um, we got along right from boot camp. I hung out, well, we got along. I, got hung along out, but... I hung out a lot with Britt at boot camp mm -hmm. and uh, Greg was off like, you know, nibbling on plants and testing things out and getting yeah, ready. Yeah, I, I guess in the beginning, I didn't really hang out with anybody in particular. It wasn't until we got to Patagonia that Zach and I started hanging out a bit more together. And mm. so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the first time at the boot camp, everybody was kind of like eyeballing each other and like, who's my competition? Yeah, I think that was the thing at boot camp is everybody was kind of leery of each other and uh, assessing one another to... Oh, who I got to keep my eye on. I think it was more that than trying to get too buddy-buddy. But, um, you know, once we got to Patagonia, we opened up to each other a lot more. Zach and I got along great, and I got along with Dan Wawak. And, you know, we all pretty well got along. Um, I like Jim Shields as well. Um, but we all, all got along good at uh, the location. Oh, that's a good question. Did you like sleeping on the hammock or the ground more? You slept uh, in the hammock the whole time. And I much. slept in the hammock the whole time. But you know what? To be honest, I feel more stable on the ground in the sense that I just find that rolling around is a little difficult for me. I mean, I but don't forget, I've been sleeping on the ground since I was a kid uh, in moss beds and this and that. So Some it's just, just I'm more... to it, though, because it, yeah. it, you know, it, it snuggles you. So in a way, mm -hmm. I really liked that, and I just, like, it became, like, very quickly, it was like that, and I was all into a hammock. I was like, mm -hmm. after the first night one, I was like, wow, that, yeah. I slept so good. Well, to be and honest, I mean, I got some really good sleeps in the hammock, and I mean, we basically had to have them, to be honest, because, uh, you know, we, weren't, we didn't bring tents or any of that. Uh, the mosquitoes were just brutal, so without those, we would have been eaten alive. So, I mean, we had to basically rely on those, too. Were there any nights the we went of... to bed hungry? I feel like we never really went to bed hungry, did we? I don't think we actually went to bed really hungry. Because um, we always we had some sort of... We had the ever stew. For those of you that donated in the Super Chats and I'm missing it, I'm scrolling on my phone and it's like... Because the computer didn't work for this. I'm not at home in my home studio, so I apologize. Uh, thank you for donating in the Super Chats like that. I really, we really appreciate that. Um, if you had a question that was attached to that, and that's why you gave the super chat, I'm not seeing them pop up. I can't figure out how to get them to like pop up anyway. Mm -hmm. um, 
where's the next 30 days? I don't know where the next 30 days survival challenge, but him and I have been talking about a cool adventure. We we have other plans. I mean, I came up here to do some, some videos with Zach in his area here and this and that. But we're thinking, you know, once a year we should do some kind of adventure, even if it's not the 30-day uh, survival challenge per se, that maybe we go to other countries and uh, try to catch, you know, sharks or crocodiles or do something adventurous in other countries too. So we're going to have plans. Um, we didn't, I didn't get carried into the weight at the beginning and putting up numbers and stuff. We did weigh ourselves beginning and end, and that will be in the, uh, the last episode. You I don't I want just, to give it away now. I, it's, yeah, I don't want to give it away, but it's, it's almost, it's almost obvious. Like not, it's not, um, you know, if you watch any of my videos, it's, it's, I always almost, I'm not going to give it away, but <laughs> it, it's not that important, you know? You're always going to lose weight, even even though we were eating fish and plants. Uh, we're just doing so much work trying to get the, the videos done for you guys. And it's a lot of work packing gear. I mean, if you saw that hike in lake that we did, oh, I tell you, that, that was no picnic. So it's a lot of work packing all the gear up into there. Uh, somebody asked, how did you know each other before the challenge? You must have missed that. Uh, we were both on History Channel's Alone Season 3. Um, he did it 51 days and I did the 87 for the win. Um, and that's how we met as the boot camps and stuff before they shipped us off to be alone, literally alone, alone. They gave us cameras and sent us out there. And that's what I bought Greg before this challenge is one of the exact same cameras like we used at alone. So he was able to just boom and he's going to keep up with the filming and keep up with his channel. He's filmed a couple things while we've been here in Vermont and he's going to, we're going to go back to Maine, and uh, when I'm busy working on some of the videos, you know, every other day we're going to have adventures, and then on the in-between days, I'm going to, like, take them up to my shelter and drop them in the woods for the for the day, you know, and let him ha let, let him loose. Fine for a day or two. Or, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next 30 Day Survival Challenge episodes will be out um, Monday on Greg's channel, Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft, and Tuesday on mine, day 14, and we'll be airing, we should be airing consistently now that we've got the rhythm worked out with the new assistant editor and all that stuff right through the end of right through christmas and um until the episodes are over i don't want to have to stop for a christmas break i want to air them right till it's done so that you guys can be able to binge watch it as much as possible right. well or i'm waiting for new extension um i the the somebody i already asked this before uh rigs what slingshot, the hammer, or the oculars, they're all great slingshots. The hammer's not so pocket friendly. I would actually not even recommend the oculars. I would new, I recommend the new Scout LT that I took out there with me um, and Greg there on the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Their newest uh, one is very pocket friendly, very small, but just as sturdy and durable as the oculars. I like that. The hammer is a great slingshot for at home. That's what I use when I I'm having a bad day and I can't hit anything. I get that thing out. It's very stable, strong slingshot, and you can rig it to be like a sling bow. So you'll have to decide that on your own. If you just want something you're going to plink and you're going to use more often, you're going to use either the Ocularis or the Scout LT because you can keep it in your pocket. And I like to keep one in my pocket. I step out of the bank and some leaf up there, a pine cone, says something about my mother, you know, and I'm <laughs> eyeballing me, you know, giving me the hairy. I pull some ammo out of my wazoo belt and boom. <laughs> And speaking of gear, if you guys haven't seen it yet, the link's in the description below all the videos. The gear vlog, the the gear video will be out as soon as I can finish it. It's a monster project to edit. It, I'm very bad at the whole voiceover thing. It takes a lot of work. So it's kind of like making that interesting and not this big boring barf on you guys kind of video. I just couldn't post it yet. So the blog is out and you can scroll through the stuff real easily by hitting that link in the description. And there's links to all the gear. And right now, through Cyber Monday, most of these people are offering 20% off. So you can get the Wazoo Firestarter necklace from Wazoo for, you know, 20% off. Uh, Simple Shots got like 20% off all of their slingshots. Um, everybody, and one of my biggest recommended gifts is the soap from Dr. Squatch. They're one of our sponsors, and it became one of my favorite things. You know, because it smells good. It smells I good. Like it soaps soap, up yeah. good. It feels good. And I think personally, it could be one of the best gifts you get somebody if you can live with the disappointment that they on their face when they first open it and go, "Oh, thanks for the soap." 
because they're every time you see them again after that though they're gonna be like that was i use this every day i love this i like showering 10 times more just because of the soap i swear and and they'll have it it smells so good it does yep I and i feel like it saved my life out there because i didn't smell like fish guts so i didn't get eaten by bears in the night you know i knew we weren't gonna get eaten by bears <laughs> <laughs> i figured they'd eat him first anyways uh you guys change your cameras on uh charge charge my cameras you can oh. check out the gear blog to know about that it's in there the you can see the solar panels and the kind of solar panels i use i've upgraded since then since the ones we brought out there with us failed their solar panels and power units that i use and the new ones that i've been set up with by a couple companies are linked right there in the gear blog link in the description below and um they're they're really nice um uh, so that's what we use with solar panels and a power unit so on cloudy days we can use the power unit to charge the batteries and uh yeah we uh Will you do a kayak camp video? If you're asking me, I've got plans for a kayak camp video. Some of those new kayaks that were sent to me, if I, I did a couple videos on it before this, love them. I want to do some uh, stuff with that. This winter, I really want to get into a uh, Vermont winter survival, you know, seven day thing up here, ice fishing to survive. You know, maybe I'll do like a snowmobile into the woods and be like, oh no, my snowmobile's broke and I'm stuck here for seven exact days. <laughs> And uh, hopefully she still starts after the seven days. I uh, may have to get a new sled for that. <laughs> seven days shouldn't be either. No, that's, no. That's 80 days less than you did in Patagonia. They might be walking out, though, if that sled doesn't restart. The the one I have right now, it tends to not start, except for on warm days. <laughs> so uh, what do you think about that, Greg? Greg's got some cool plans. He... I don't know about kayak videos for you. Do you ever do any kayaking? Uh, I've never done any kayaking. Um... He's a canoe guy. Doesn't he just yes. look like a canoe guy? More yeah. of a raft guy. You're a raft guy? Well, yeah, so, you know, lakes are okay, but... Uh, oh, yeah? Never done the fast water. I, we were supposed to go um, river rafting this year, but that never never happened, but... Uh, yeah, Greg is with me here in Vermont, Rutland, at my parents' house. They invited him, and uh, I, I asked him, and he said, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. well, it's they, everybody's been very hospitable here, uh, New episodes, for those of you that are just tuning in, will be out Monday on Greg's channel, Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft, for his day. And now the, the episodes will be synced up, and they will be... Um, but we'll still be putting out Greg's on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and mine on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So you'll be able to watch my episode, and then the next day you'll be able to watch Greg's episode of that same day. So Greg's... Next one is a double episode. Mine will be day 14 on Tuesday, and then Greg's day 14 on Wednesday. Um, that's the best way we're able to do it, because uh, I'm doing the final edit on his videos that my assistant editor does. So I need to finish mine, and then go over and do the final edit on that, and post the next day. And, so, and that's why we're taking this week off, because I'm fried. Um... Who actually caught the most fish? You'll have to watch to the end to find out. We don't want to give it away. What were the um, numbers at in the last one? I, you're up by four, I think, right now. On see, it it day 14. varies episode to episode, but if you want to see the final count, um, do we say the final count by the end? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right it's in the last there. episode? Yep, yep, I got so it in there. So stay tuned. See, that'll keep you watching. I got it. You I got him beat out. on gophers right now, though, by uh, by yeah. two, uh, three, yeah. three gophers. Yeah. I'm up, I'm up three gophers on him. <laughs> uh, any type of tips. ever stew? At, oh, tips for ever stew. Uh, people ask this all the time, like, how do you not get sick from the food? And the trick is simply, uh, in a colder region, if you boil something every 24 hours for at least a full solid boil, so everything's cooked through. For one whole minute so depending on how thick your stew is if it's boiling i would go for a minute to five minutes of boiling rolling boil it's sanitized you can't get sick it could even be completely rotten and taste disgusting but you wouldn't get sick you might get you're, you're killing any new bacteria yeah. each time you boil it but I mean, so in gets... texas you probably boil twice a day because if it was hot the that's heat. what i did yeah, yeah no doubt so and it didn't go rancid mm -hmm. great yeah so but it gets to a point where, yes, I mean, it's just, uh, you don't want to eat it anymore, so you have to start over. But, wouldn't you agree? 
I I just keep eating it. And well, I know he keeps it, eating it, but I get to a point where I just I don't know. I'd like to start it, a new batch. It gets to a point. The worst part, I it get it did in Texas even though it gets to a point where like the bones in there are dissolving and you're trying not to drink those or eat the you're eating the pieces of meat and you keep eating bones that are like soft and it's just not fun. You know, mm-hmm. nothing like a soft rib bone and you could it's kind of crunching and it's kind of melting and it's kind of ugh. And then, then there was the one time all the flies got in it. Remember? We yeah. Now, covered it. We we didn't keep the flies out, and it got warm, and all the flies got in. So it was had a layer of flies on it. That was well, that foolish pot's fault. Yeah. It had slits in the lid that so you can easily pour off yeah. or steam or something. So it wasn't that appetizing at that point. But. I don't know about a survival challenge in Wisconsin. We've been talking about a one week in Australia. Is that what we're? Yeah, a week or two, even, eh? Yeah, you probably. Know, a couple yeah. of weeks. I think it's mm-hmm. a long ways to go for a week. because It probably wouldn't be a survival challenge. It'd probably just, just be adventure, a series of videos, you know? A series of videos and maybe try to catch some sharks and do something like that. So. No, Greg won't be taking over his editing. I will continue to produce his videos. Um, we've got it all figured out how we're going to manage to do that. He's going to try to even... Um, you got a gold claim after I left? I bought a gold claim this year, so I'm going to be doing some mining, and that, that's something to watch for on my uh, channel, too. I'm going to be building a cabin uh, this coming summer, um, and actually doing some mining on my claim, uh, try to get some gold. So, that'll be another series of uh, videos there coming up. Yeah, uh, so that's, that's what Greg's, one of his bigger plan is, um, and then... Doing uh, maybe doing some TPing and some other stuff this winter, getting up to some cool adventures. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, I've spent a couple of years in the truck now. I'm tired of it, so I'm gonna build a TP this year. It'll be a fun thing to do. I'm gonna get running hot water and a whole bit in there. Um, I'm not planning on doing a fan challenge thing. Uh, I figure maybe around a million subs. Maybe I'll do one then. Uh, right now I'm just focusing on spending as much time with my family as I can and then and spending as much the rest of the time doing all this for you guys and for well myself because I love to have adventures you know so uh, I'll do a fan challenge and uh, after all that I mean we're doing I'm growing and everything's growing so much right now you know taking on Greg as a new channel to edit those you know and new employees and the website growing um, it's like I don't I don't have time to branch out to something I don't understand just yet. Right. Somebody wants to know, Greg, are you a Christian? Well, I'll put it this way, I definitely believe in God. There's no doubt of that. And uh, Zach's family here is very religious and you know, everybody has their own uh, opinions and this and that. And of course I I believe in God for sure. Um how many bears do we see? You're going to have to keep watching if you want to know that. How big was he? The big one there that we keep teasing in the... Yeah, yeah. That we teased in the whole beginning thing and stuff and in, in the trailer. Well, put it this way. We did see bears and we did see uh, a big one for sure. So, um, yeah. We will have some footage of the bear eventually on the series here too coming up. What's your most dangerous situation? Greg's got a real dangerous situation. Mine was that cat in Patagonia and he just walked through my camp, but I didn't feel any danger from him. I'm like, that's a big cat back towards the water. He was just like, it was day two or day three and he was walking, you know, big cougar just walked through because this is where he usually walks and I was in his way and he was like, you know, kind of like looked at you, looked at me and went around and just kept going. Mm. They probably don't see a lot of people there. So, you know, they're, Probably more curious than anything else, see. Eh? Uh, neither of us are big Bigfoot fans or followers or believers necessarily. Uh, um, I Greg, used to be as a kid quite a bit, and you know, just seen too many situations that turned out to be hoaxes. And I just, I, it's my opinion that I've just spent so much time. I spent my life in the bush, almost literally, that you think I would have seen some sign of them at this point, but. You know, if you believe in what you want to believe. I'm not trying to discourage anybody's beliefs, you know. I think a lot of people want to believe something. It just gives them some excitement. Or I think people like excitement, and that, nothing wrong with that. So Thank you, Abdullah. We talked about that in Patagonia and hearing all kinds of weird sounds. And 
Um, oh, people keep asking Christian question mark. Maybe you're asking if I am, because Greg always said he believes in God. And I say I am a Christian. Yes. Um, and your scary situation, he was just telling my folks about it. <clears throat> Charged by grizzlies. Yeah. Yeah, I've had, I've had a grizzly charge out of the bush and come stomping right up within about 15, maybe 20 feet, but maybe it seemed closer at the time, but you don't really think about the distance. You just think, oh man, it just stops your heart, that's for sure. And, and, and there was a reason why, right? Yeah, it, turn, it turns out uh, that that bear had a, a kill that had a berry just, just right off the trail that I was walking. So it heard me coming and it just charged out to protect its food so um you know you just got to be careful you just never know when in bear country they do protect their young and their food so making sure we're still charging so we don't lose you guys uh some randomly uh, yeah so it's like like most uh, animal attacks are always related to something you know you're not standing your ground they're protecting something they're protecting a cub and you know, that's why I came up with the bear safe hammocking video and not telling everybody right at the beginning I know bears climb trees because I knew it would get me lots of views. But also, you know, I explained that all at the end. The whole point is so that, you know, and that's what we do here is the rest of the series goes on. We really get into building some stuff. So it's going to, um, so don't worry about us that, that the videos aren't taking off like the first Texas one did because I think as you guys get into this and our cover photos show the stuff that we start building, it's the, the adventure just, this is, we just barely started, you know, this whole really takes off the rest of the series. Well, and the scenery is just, just awe-inspiring in the drone footage. I'm not a fan of Cheese Whiz, you? No. Okay, I don't know why somebody needed to know that. <laughs> <laughs> not big but, on Cheese Whiz. hey, maybe if they're... We don't usually bring it either. So. Uh, no, we didn't bring any food except for, and no, we didn't. We uh, had Wadobo. We had the Wadobo and, 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 and coffee. You know, we brought coffee, and, and some people have been like, "Oh, that's a calorie per cup of coffee." Oh, well, you know, we could have gone without it. We could have, but it's like we're doing this for the fun of it, right? Not, not to torture ourselves. Yeah, we're doing. I mean, we drank a lot of teas too, but there is nothing you gotta admit. I mean, if you're a coffee drinker, you gotta have your coffee in the morning. So we didn't punish ourselves with. Everybody enough. really wants this fan challenge. New people coming in or something. Yeah. Keep bringing it up. I'm going to have to, I thought about it, Woody Beardsman and I talked about doing a fan challenge and getting like 10 or 20 fans out there, you know, maybe we even get 40 fans and we do an initial like two day thing of everybody and then like a, kind of like a survivor thing where we, you know, start eliminating people and, um, or something and then like we get down to 10 and then we do with the 10 people, we do like a whole week of adventure or something. Figure something out maybe yeah, yeah. you know yeah we, we, as we build our team me greg the wooded beards man you know uh maybe ace if he's still in and like we we put something together you know mm -hmm. and we could stand there like a you know like the survival experts and value and <laughs> teaching i don't know what you're teasing be the judges be the judges and we give you your survival take a fan each and have a competition yeah. we'll see Everybody That's stand up. We'll tell you what your survival PSR is and, and how well it's gone up, like making it afraid during the challenge. Well, actually, I did read a question. It was further back that asked if you would go on Naked and Afraid. Oh, really? Yeah. I wanted to do Naked and Afraid originally because it alone hadn't come out yet when I started watching these shows. And I just didn't want to do it naked. So when Alone came out, I was like, 10 items. I don't even use that many items to build like the the goat pens and the cool hurdle waddle fences and my little stuff in the backyard and traps to catch my gopher that's eating my cabbage. So like, yeah, I, I'm doing this. This is much better than showing up naked and get one item. Exactly. Yeah. Greg wants to do a knife for a week series, like goes out and film yeah, so, a knife and cameras. <laughs> yeah. Camera gear and um, just with a knife and do a week. But it'd have to be the right time of year. I mean, I'm not going to do it in the winter when it's 30 below. But uh, that'd be something. Well, that'd be well. Yeah, I would. But well, <laughs> I'm going to build my teepee first. Everybody always asks, oh, "Why don't you do something more primitive?" And you know, I did 87 days on alone, and that was about as primitive as I cared to get. You know, because I never started doing any of this stuff to be like any sort of a survivalist. I did it. Um, I did a loan to win it from my family and I started playing around in the woods to be a homesteader. Like I wanted to homestead. So that's my technique for winning a loan is I went out there and I homesteaded. So I made myself as comfortable 
and burnt as many calories as it took to be comfortable and enjoy my home while I was there. And so it wasn't that hard for me to sit around and, well, I didn't sit around that much, but <laughs> I didn't sit around while I was making 87, uh, no, 200 and something sets of spoons and chopsticks. But like in between times, you know, I kept myself busy just, you know, as if it was like my home. This is like I built yeah. my home there and nothing else existed until it was over and they told me I won. So to go and do something, you know, even more primitive with just, you know, and a flint and a steel and, you know, and go out, I, I don't, I just don't feel the urge to. Yeah, no doubt. No. I love the air rifle. Uh, it fed us, and I had a blast with it. I do get stuff with the slingshot. You'll have to keep watching to see that. They were dodging me a couple of times, and uh, I'd shoot at them, and they'd just be like, just like shooting at a deer with a bow. They'd be like, Phew. you ever you ever shot? I know you were, he was saying today he's gotten like how many deer with a bow? I've got six deer with a bow and an elk. Yeah. So have you ever had, shot at one and have it jump the string and duck uh, no, no, no. So that does happen but the thing sometimes. Is, like, you, but... you know, I never take a shot unless it's a feasible shot either. I mean, I know a lot of people, they try taking these ridiculous long shots. I mean, but, but don't forget, I mean, with a bow, you only get a shot maybe one out of 20 opportunities. So Yeah. Uh, most dangerous situation was just me and Patagonia and Greg with, with I'm bear, sure, that bear charging. And bear that charging. Time. And... But... Yeah, that, uh, like, uh, that always happens, you know, even then it was turned out to be for a reason. The bear had done that because he was protecting a kill, other bears protecting cubs. Um, I'm sure if we took any of the, if we were able to back analyze any of those videos of bears chasing people like mountain bikers through the woods, there was a reason for that. Maybe yeah. just the fact that they were mountain biking and it looked kind of like prey running along. Well, the thing is, as soon as you run, uh, they consider you a threat and they, they have to deal with the threat. So... Whether it's cubs or whatever, uh, as soon as you run, uh, that's when your big problem starts. I stood still and talked nice to this bear just like you would a, a dog. And he eventually just shook his head and sauntered off because he realized I was talking in a low tone, nice. He didn't perceive me as a threat anymore. And he just wandered off. Oh, I read one of these questions, and then I was going to answer it after you stopped, and I forgot. <laughs> uh, no, we don't get to We it. didn't see any Sasquatch. Oh, what was my most... Sam Squatch. Sam Squatch. Oh, yeah, they're Sam Squatch in, in Canada or whatever they are. <laughs> um, thank you, those of you that have been donating the Super Chat. That is much appreciated. Everything that you guys purchase from me on the website or from the sponsors, link below is goes to help me make better videos for you guys. I roll it really, do roll it all right back into the business, into the new editor that I've hired to be able to edit Greg's videos. He, the new editor pre-edits the videos and then I do the final edit for like two hours, just tune in and put that little mm -hmm. back on the video, back into the videos. And uh, so right now the gear video is linked below in the description. I didn't, not the gear video, the gear blog, which is a link to my website with an easily scrollable list of all the gear that we had out there, where you can get it from, and some little thoughts from me on that gear, and some of the stuff um, that I have chosen never to bring with me again, and there's a little, like, what's my new uh, favorite thing. And most of those sponsors' gear, those that are linked below in that gear video, are all 20% off now through Cyber Monday. So, And some of them, I think, even have, like, 50% off deals on some of the stuff while they're moving out there for new stuff for the new year, trying to make space for it. So check it out. How often your videos come out. The new, uh, as we get back into it next week, the 30 Day Survival Challenge videos will be as follows. Greg's videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then my videos on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. That is because I'm doing editing on both of those videos. So Greg's uh, next video will catch him up to my series. And so we'll both be posting. Mine will be out Tuesday out with day 14. Then Greg's Wednesday, day 15. So you'll be able to watch them uh, consecutively. <clears throat> um, Sounds good. Except for the Saturday one. So my Saturday one will come out. And then mon next Monday, you'll have to wait to watch G Greg's take on it. But mm -hmm. it's the price we pay for having a, a small little studio and doing everything in-house. Um, which, if you haven't asked, somebody did here. I, I spend anywhere from... 20 to, uh, you know, seven hours editing 
each of these videos as well as doing a million other things and raising my kids at the same time so and making new videos oh yeah um how nervous about the bear were you me not nervous at all i trusted greg when he said and i've uh just i don't i just don't get afraid of stuff um I, do, I just leave it up to god i figure you know if it's my time to go home he's gonna take me home the best thing i can do is be smart about it you know and i washed my hands instead of like in texas i just wipe my hands on my pants and i wash them two or three times a day whenever i was already down by the water and uh so i probably smelt pretty ripe by the end of that one whereas this time i used my sponsor's dr squatch soap loved it is my best yeah, recommended good. Christmas present for you guys to buy for somebody. You'll hear about it from them all year long, how awesome it is and how much they love it. You just have to live with the disappointment when they first unwrap it and before they've used it once and realize how awesome of a gift you really did give them. And you can subscribe. So if you have a smelly family member, you can subscribe and they'll get it monthly in the mail. They'll get that reminder monthly. <laughs> um... I don't know. You can lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink, though, right? So it doesn't matter how much. Do you? Uh, I've always just used my kids' soap in the shower the whole life. So and now I'm addicted to Dr. Squatch soap and like having manly soap that smells like the outdoors. Um, to ever seen? No, nope, neither of us claim to have ever seen the Bigfoot. I heard some weird noises in the woods that I could not explain, and none of the producers could explain to me once they came and took me out of the woods. Um, but they weren't so weird that I think the producers were hiding out in the woods behind my place out in Patagonia and like making bear sound, uh, not bear, uh, Sasquatch sound. So I, I think we would have seen him by now or found a dead one in a river somewhere, washed up on a beach, something, if there was an actual Sasquatch. I can't think that they're that big of a ninja that they stayed that hidden. Mm, yeah. But you know what? <clears throat> Don't like to get into the controversy of it because, I mean... It, it gives hope to some people that, you know, there's something mysterious out there. And, you know, the bush in itself is mysterious. And he, even knowing where we were that there was grizzlies, I mean, just that mystique about getting out in the bush is fascinating too. So, you know, those you know are real. When you see them, that's fascinating too. I haven't spent a lot of time in the main Northwood. I went up north once this year um, with Aubrey and we did some fishing and... Uh, that was really fun, and I've actually been thinking about selling my land in near because it's near my house down there, and I like having my land to go do stuff in the woods nearby. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about selling it and buying a camp further north, or at least a camp on a pond somewhere. Um, <clears throat> is your seasoning you use for all your meals? Uh, <clears throat> the adobo is a special blend. It's not adobo you could go online and find millions of different recipes and uh different ratios and make an adobo that would taste maybe a uh like 85 percent like the adobo but uh we've done some custom tweaking to it the widow beardsman and i um oh him first and then i did a little tweaking to it as we put it into production and collaborated on that and brought that to life and sell that on our com now what is your dream what was your dream growing up i didn't have a solid dream growing up uh, i just knew i wanted to make my own inventions and that's why after winning the show i was able to invest my money in cameras and i decided like i'm going to make youtube so i can make whatever i want to make and share it with people on videos and make my own things instead of continuing to build boats for everybody else what about you um <clears throat> No, it wasn't being a drywaller, that's for sure. But, uh, no, I wanted to be good at uh, outdoor survival, and here I am, you know. And, and actually, the chance to get on the Alone Show was just a, a dream come true, to be honest with you. That's exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to be doing, was get on these shows and show people, you know, what you can do. And I just love getting out doing the videos. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the kind of time that I want. To be out getting the videos that i want but i'm going to have more and more time as as it goes on here um so i'm basically doing you know what i want to be doing getting out enjoying the wilderness and getting these videos so that you guys can 
learn these tricks too, you know, that I spend a lot of years learning. Somebody says, Greg, I love your hair. We talked about that earlier. He's not going to cut it. He's just trimming it. Don't trim it too much. Well, That's your persona. Yeah, 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 you don't, yeah, yeah. you just like cut the split ends off a little bit yeah, yeah. you know get like so how much you think like, get a perm no that's too <laughs> short <laughs> uh, okay like, maybe yeah. maybe just a couple a concessions couple like yeah every every go like three times over the next year and get her trimmed up if you want to but i said something earlier just joking and now i think you're getting at a complex <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> i don't want him to trim his hair that's a part of his image and you know that's the image that i'm trying to sell so i keep building his youtube channel really well no, for those of you who haven't checked it out yet, make sure you go over there, check out Oven's Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. His videos are rocking it. They're doing really well. I do the final edits on those, and uh, my new editor helping me with that, and he is doing an awesome job. They're coming together. It's doing really, really well. So I am, like, we're both really excited about how that's going. And, uh, and for those of you that are just joining us, too, remember, leave it in the comments below of all the videos. I'm watching every episode or just a comment, anything so that you can have the chance to win the thousand dollars or all of my gear as a prize at the end of the series. I'll do one more announcement. Hey, make sure that you, you know, if you haven't already left it, go back. There's one last chance. I'm going to randomly pick somebody from a random video. We're going to make sure that they've left a comment at every video and they will win that thousand dollars or the gear. And, um, we're going to start doing some more live streams through December. All the sponsors have donated a hundred uh, different th uh, hundred things, like to in total, like 10 items each. Like we have like 10 Wazoo Firestar necklaces. We're going to start picking random videos and seeing somebody's comment. Um, I'm watching every episode or something and just give you a, uh, a gift. And we're trying to do that before Christmas so that you will have that for Christmas time if you want it for yourself or for somebody else. <clears throat> Primitive ice fishing. Somebody's really got that on the brain. I, uh, Greg's gonna. Yeah, you actually started working I, on that, right? I started working on, um, yeah, my my ice fishing primitive uh, set line trap. Um, so I had it all built. I was working on the video. The problem then was uh, the ice wasn't that thick, and then it warmed up before I came here to Vermont, and uh, there was no ice left to actually finish the video. But I'm going to finish the video. As soon as there's enough ice to walk on again. We didn't really have something scary happening. We had something surprising happen. Um, a, a big cat walked right through the camp. I don't. I didn't see it in any of the footage because we didn't film it because it happened we, we so fast. We weren't filming, and yeah. I, I don't think you even saw it at all. Did you? I, mean, I didn't. I just know I didn't bother to like rehash it in like the videos and start make a deal out of it because we didn't. I didn't yeah. see it at all. It, and it was just, it just came down the trail and scooted off. I mean, it, it there was no time to set up a camera or anything. It was there for just a second or two. Um, uh, what is your favorite verse? Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, I think, for me. I always say it to myself a lot and think about it. I don't know. Um, ever consider, uh, the desert, desert, well, you almost were there in the sense, eh? in the desert, uh, in well, Texas, Texas isn't, I it was guess, pretty deserty, not like rolling sand hills. Bob Hansler has invited me back down since we didn't get to hang out during the last 30 days of the challenge I did with Chris Thorne and drop forge survival, um, in Texas. It was, you know, it was Texas-y, but not deserty per se. Um, and it was during November. So he, but he's invited me down. He's got a new place he's been hanging out at and doing some stuff with huge acres of not necessarily desert, but like rocky, you know, just beautiful. I mean, the footage, if you haven't seen Bob Hansler's videos, he put out a couple of videos from that new area and he wants to do some horseback type thing. He said he's got like some really beautiful secret places that he wants to take me to that are just sound like the coolest thing ever, like a million dollar hacienda out in the middle of the desert, the woodsy you know, Texas place that's like, it's just abandoned for years and grown over. It sounds so cool. Your battery's okay on there. It, it's yeah. losing juice as we talk, my battery is, but we've been in here for 50 minutes. We'll do another 30 minutes and then I'm going to say goodnight to y'all. We will do another 30, uh, I mean, a uh, another live stream before Greg goes back. He's 
going to be here for two weeks all together kind of thing. We're going to go do some more filming around my place and uh, just take him out and get some lobsters into this guy. He needs lobster. some lobster. Yeah. You know, he, he loves the lobster. And uh, yeah. so we're going to go and set some traps. We'll make some videos of that that we can air after the 30 day survival challenge of uh, setting some traps with some pig hides and some lobster traps and catch some, some lobsters and doing some fun stuff like that. Yeah, I can't wait for that. We're in Vermont at my parents' house. Joe Robinette, yeah, he doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah, I don't know. Um, people are always commenting, oh, you guys should do something, but uh, uh, he, um, I don't know if I've even actually ever reached out to him. I just, I, uh, he never replies to the comments that people say, leave it all the time. People are always telling me I'm just going by, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Um, I don't really agree with going out in the woods and drinking beers on camera. So I, I don't really have an interest in promoting his videos or hanging out with them. I, I just try to be as family friendly and safe as possible. And I, you know, I'm nothing against him doing that, but you know, I'm very selective about who I spend my time with and how I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, what's going to show up on my videos. So that's, you know, yeah, you should be. How long did you want to work with Greg? Um, it's a weird way of saying it. Uh, we talked about this not even that long after the last, first 30 Day Survival Challenge. We knew each other from Alone on the History Channel. He made it 51 days, I made it 87. And uh, so we met at the boot camp and then at the before they shipped us off to be alone and film ourselves for that TV show. Um, you can email me. Um, and or even Greg, there's a link in the description of our um, our videos on the information page. If you're on the home page of our YouTube channels, uh, mindsfellersmakerymischief.com, there's a connection there for a contact thing. You can email me with questions and things like that. And Greg has his own email um, there, so on his YouTube channel, on his like contacts thing um and he is single ladies so if there's <laughs> single ladies out there that i want to go live in the woods <laughs> not too that big want to go where i go <laughs> uh, uh, all right uh are your slingshots in the store if there there might still be a left, few left of my uh hornet slingshot if not uh we got another 80 of them that will be ready for uh, purchasing in the next week or so here. So you'll be able to have some in time for Christmas for those of you that have been waiting for them for a while. I'm sorry, we're always out of stock. We're trying to get that figured out. And that's another crazy thing I'm working on, putting a whole uh, workshop together so we can produce more slingshots and stuff. And my new, um, if that's what you're actually asking about, the new Sparrow slingshot that I'm doing with Simple Shot. They just emailed me about it today. Uh, they need my signature for the to be engraved into them, and um, production is coming along on that. I don't know if they're going to be done in time for Christmas. There may be a pre-order in time for Christmas, but uh, those will be out soon. If not before Christmas, just after Christmas. Uh, Greg and I are planning on doing some more projects together. We're doing some projects right now. We're revisiting some of my old stomping grounds. And he's yanking yeah. fish out, and I'm watching him yank fish out while I'm trying to catch my own. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get him in front of a catfish before he goes home because he's yeah, never had I, catfish. I never, never caught uh, folks uh, catfish. So Zach was telling me there's catfish in this creek here and other places there might be catfish. So I hope in the next couple of days while we're here in Vermont I can catch a catfish. But I'm looking forward to going back to Maine and getting some lobster. And we're videoing the whole time that we're you know i'm here for the two weeks so there's going to be some videos to follow up the 30-day challenge after i get back to canada so stay tuned bob hansler would a beardsman wildcraft greg ace should do a tribal 30 days throughout challenge that's a good idea i'll have to look into that i'll have to look in that i like the sounds of that um a tribal 30-day survival challenge that would be really hard. I think if we did something like that, the Wittabeerman of Ty and, and Ty, 
uh, have talked about um, launching a cha new channel even, calling it the Survival Challenge, where we would do this, um, do videos that when we all come together, we would film them just with maybe even a camera guy and or ourselves filming it, but put them into one video of one epic series of episodes for the, each one. How did somebody even do that? Look at that. What? Somebody typed out like a sniper rifle oh, as yeah. a comment. That is sick. That yeah. is the coolest comment I've ever seen. Like <laughs> it's a, like a dot dash double dash dot dash dash dash, and it's like a a, a, a sniper rifle. That's they're good at drawing. That's quite the uh, comment. <coughs> Kudos. To... Um, what is your favorite survival show? Alone. <laughs> really? You? Um. Well, you got to go with the one you were on, I think. I don't know. I don't really watch any of them right now. Like, I haven't uh, even watched the last season because I got all wrapped up and I didn't want to start it before we did our thing and then they not finished. And then I just, ever since, I mean, I used to be somebody special that I watched them with. And so watching those kind of shows kind of got weird for me now. So I don't, mm -hmm. like, I don't like, uh, I don't watch them that much anymore. I watch well, shows on how to, I watch YouTube videos on how to do YouTube or catch more fish. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the alone show. I do like the I hope it show. carries on. and You know, I think Zach will get another chance to get on it. I think it's the best, most entertaining, and most informative. Most realistic. Realistic. Be, you know. And, like, yeah, it's the, it's the best one on there. I, I think. think so. And I liked Naked Afraid for a while because, like, they are forced to do slightly more clever things, but there was only, like, one clever thing that seemed like that the producer actually show because they're spending the rest of the show showing conflict between the two people. They pick two people just to fight. You yeah, know? right, right. <clears throat> yeah, well. So I find it hard to, hard, I find it hard to stay, keep watching this, the Naked and Afraid stuff. Right. Um, Fish oh, my fonts on the Outdoor Vitals loft tech jacket. I love it. It's my favorite jacket. Um, as you notice, like I don't wear my vest so much anymore because the Outdoor Vitals jacket kind of gives me the best of both, both worlds. Like the reason I used to love, excuse me, I had a cold, so I'm eating cough drops. Um, the whole reason I used to wear the vest all the time is it because I could breathe out my arms, you know, and and stuff. They're even during the middle of winter. And the outdoor vitals jacket kind of protects your arms, rain, weather, all of that dries out when it gets wet just from your body warmth. And it's got the unzippable armpit so you can stay cool while staying warm, you know, on weird days that are like hot and then cold every two seconds or something. Um, and that brings up the big point again. The link in the description go up below the gear blog. Check it out if you haven't already. The gear video will be out. It was just a Mondo project. And all the content they have for it right now is like super boring and droll. And I just, until I get it good, I'm not going to release it. Because it's going to be there forever on YouTube. And so I just, I just can't help it. I can't put something out that's just obnoxious. Um, you know, where, I, where did you want to go for a loan? If you had, where did I before want we to found go? out. Before we found out, what was your top pick? I was hoping that maybe it would be somewhere like Alaska where the plants would be familiar to me and like because of the temperate zone that they have through that area. Um, but, but, you know, like, I mean, Patagonia was fine, too. It was pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. I wanted to do Siberia. Siberia? Yeah. Yeah, ever, ever since watching Happy People, A Year in the Tigra, I don't know if you guys have watched that. I don't know if it's on YouTube. I believe you can get it on Amazon Prime. Oh, I was just addicted like, to wanting to be in Siberia. It just looks so mm. cool. With it. Yeah, yeah. He like split because uh, he made stuff. And I love making stuff. You guys know how much I love making stuff. But the guy in the video, you know, he's dropped out there by the government and they never come back for him. And so he just basically ends up living there. And he splits spruce and he heat bends them into skis and he puts moose shank fur on them. And they just like skate across the top of the snow like so easily 
with them. And he does his trapping line with it and cool traps that he makes, you know, all just with a with a knife and chopping them out and pre-does them in the fall. And then in the winter, he comes through and just, boom, sets them with little scraps of the meat and or hide from the moose he got that year and, mm-hmm. you know, traps all his furs and sends those back to civilization and lives in the woods. All right. What was it like watching yourself on TV? Yeah, that's a good question, eh? Um, it was kind of weird, actually, to begin with. Here you are on, on the big screen. It was kind of weird to begin with. Yeah. Right? I loved it. It was fun. Oh, no, I liked it, too. Like, I still like watching myself, because I, I watch myself 100 videos. times over on the YouTube videos, and I'm just tickled every time I see my own self doing some of the edits, because, you know... Uh, it's like that's part of my making like not just making stuff out in the woods but i'm making these videos and i'm making and then when they come together the drone footage and the music and then i make his videos yeah, and put that last twist on it and that perfect as yeah. it comes around and well, it's an art mm. and you're doing great so, yeah yeah no it is neat to see yourself on tv like that but right mm. um you say alone what what's that say uh, how produced would you say Alone was compared to other shows? Alone wasn't produced. The, 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 the edits were produced by them, but everything else was us. They drop us off with four cameras. Uh, the one that Greg's filming with now is the most modern version of the exact same one that we had on Alone, uh, two versions newer. And um, they, they drop us out there with the GoPro and the... Um, Two GoPros, JVC and uh, and, and, cams. and, and a, yeah, the XA thirty at the time or XA twenty five, Canon uh, professional camcorder, a pile of SD cards and piles of batteries that are in a big Pelican case that we have to drag around if we decide to move our shelters, <coughs> and, <coughs> and your ten items. And that's it. A bunch of prohibitions about you know it uh, shooting things that we're not allowed to with if we have bows or whatever and. Uh, <coughs> And, prohibited animals and, yeah yeah we never i never saw any prohibited animals anyways I but didn't see any hurt actually i did see one there was a frog and that was one of the things they said we're definitely not allowed to eat frogs because they're protected yeah a lot of mice <laughs> but you weren't allowed to eat them either i oh, killed yeah. a lot of mice in my shelter <coughs> i never saw a single day. mice yeah i didn't have well. like a single yeah anything huh. any any tracks in the woods even with all the snow never a single yeah. thing right I did see a lot of pig tracks. You didn't see pig tracks? No. There, there were, well, there was twice that they came through my territory okay. in the night, and they moved on, and they never came back. Like, okay. I followed where those tracks were that first time. On, like, day 10, they came through. I set a bunch of traps all over the place, pits with spikes and pendulums and giant rogs with spikes on them that would swing out of the trees and, <laughs> like, all this stuff. And, you know, I even had this pit with spikes and then and a big log that was above it that weighed, like, 50 pounds so that if they fell on the spikes and they only poked themselves, the big log was going to come down, too, and smash them into the spikes. and Would have worked. And, and, of course, I have my bowl, but they only... They came around my camp a lot at night, squealing, and because they were upset that I was there, it was you know interfering in their territory or whatever. But it was always at the dark time. We couldn't, so. but we couldn't eat the mice because of the hantavirus, so we were prohibited from eating the mice. The hantavirus is a vice that gives you respiratory failure, and it's pretty much completely fatal. It's I don't think it's fatal it is most fatal, of the fatal. time. Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time, <laughs> and and if you do survive, you're not going to be in good shape the rest of your life. So. Yeah. So you, you you want to respect that the fact that yeah. Yeah, you can live without a couple of mice calories. You can't live without uh, your lungs. Um, what happens with the wet boots? They all have to keep watching if you want to see with the wet boots. I pretty much should just deal with it. You know, and, like keep you know we as we build our home, and that's what's going to happen through the rest of the series. We build our home, and it, you know we become more comfortable and secure, and we're able to you know deal with the weather all of that in in so much more secure way there's a much better fissuation at this new place you know everything we're doing is is coming together and now we'll, and now that we're in one place we're not moving around we've got time to build stuff and so every episode i'm building something new pretty much every episode um i think the next thing i got coming up is the fish net the big fish net that i build yeah and, and that yeah. worked well yeah and, i like uh, that yeah yeah we start i start building all kinds of stuff he's 
You know, we we build our fortress in the trees that you keep getting teased little teeny Lots pictures of. Lots of little surprises of the things we built and things we did to entertain ourselves. So, <laughs> I might do an overseas one. I want to do uh, Africa next, but it, I can't seem to get a hold of the people that I want to do it with there. They haven't replied to emails or anything. So, um, if you ever go and watch Air Arms SA, um, so Air Arms South Africa with Matt Dover. Um, I, I loved his YouTube channel. I've been watching that ever since I got back from alone. And uh, I have kind of slacked on watching it lately. But uh, go over there, watch his videos, leave him a comment saying, hey, you should do a 30 day survival challenge with Fowler. And put the um, don't put the link to my channel because that hides your that hides your comment. If you leave a comment on somebody and you try to share a link with them in the comments, um, it, it puts it for review. And a lot of YouTubers never even see those comments. I, I don't. Um, so you just, just tell them, Hey, go do a, a thing with fellers, make your image it. You got to do a 30 day survival challenge. And so maybe he'll finally reply to me and we can get the ball rolling. <clears throat> Somebody keeps asking, uh, let's see, bear hunting with an air rifle. I would love to do all kinds of hunting with the air rifle. Um, I got a new one that I we're working on putting together, uh, like a more powerful than the 50 caliber with a smaller size slug that uh is more of a, a high-tech rifle than the 50 caliber it's just a giant slug chucker and uh not nearly as accurate so oh, once that's together maybe i'll be able to do that i was hoping to do a deer hunt this year and it just didn't work out um speaking of belts what do you carry in your wazoo cash belt um I had a video that I did on that, another Mile High Pocket Dump, and I haven't finished yet. So maybe after this 30 Days Wild Challenge, we'll put it out and you can see all the stuff. But mostly it's slingshot ammo, and then all of the stuff from the Wazoo kit. Uh, so if you go to the Wazoo link below, you can see their kit that goes inside the belts, and it's a full survival-y type kit with a water bag and filtration pellets and all that stuff, and rope and you know a little hank of this and a little hank of that, duct tape and... All kinds of stuff. I wonder. Oh, down to six percent. So we got like ten more minutes, and then we're gonna have to say good night. Uh, pike head soup. I have made fish head soup on pretty much every fish so far, and it's just it tastes pretty it's, good. Yeah, it is. I mean, the broth was really good from any of those stews we made. You know, the gopher added with the heads of the the fish. I mean, it was pretty good stuff. Hey, eh? yeah, good broth. Um. Have you tried bullet rocks? Uh, what is that? Boiled rock stove? Rocket stove. Oh. Bottle rocket stove. Bottle rocket stove. Well, you uh, you made one. I made a rocket stove in Texas. I made a little bit of a rocket stove that we cooked our coffee on one day. Um, I love. I want to do a real nice rocket stove at my house in Maine at some point, so I can when I have friends over I can use it to like put a pan on top like a big wok type rocket stove but mm -hmm. yeah I always try to make one during my challenge That's a good question global warming no about uh, <laughs> eating the plants <laughs> <laughs> no. have I ever eaten any plants and then got sick because I didn't identify the right plant have you there's one time okay I'll tell you I <laughs> this is honest I mean you gotta be careful with your plants okay so I thought I was picking shaggy mains actually one time and it was alcohol inky and I had a couple of beers so it kind of made me uh, like I was stoned but I didn't actually get sick or, or die from it Wow I um Texas I we we had the cactus and it turns out that Chris is allergic to it and since we didn't like boil it and then eat the cactus we had kind of a mild effect that made us uh, almost like being stoned but being sickly stoned so i okay. felt i felt really sleepy and i wasn't nearly as allergic to it i exact man we fried it up and made like fried green beans in the raccoon fat and it was really tasty and i felt like super sluggish sleepy and i was like i woke up i heard him puking and i'm like oh no he's puking uh <laughs> and i went back to bed i woke up the next day i felt like i had a touch of a hangover maybe a little bit but he was super sick he he ended up leaving going and getting checked out and coming back before and, right. and kept going with the challenge mind you but he was he was like super concerned that you know he he was like all messed up and right. that i had like poisoned him and 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 stuff <laughs> he, 
you know so, so and we believe that was you know now the the cactus because we read about it some people have allergic reaction to it yeah i'm just worried about the phone because i see it's the screen's dimming down here it's, oh it's um, at five percent we're fine so we're okay yeah. for a bit i know how to tell so and it's still yeah when it's gonna die right yeah. out on us so, right we're trying to get the most as we well, can out of this <laughs> just don't want it to cut us right off and hey where'd those guys another vanishing act if we disappear it's because it's because the phone died the phone died we had to we tried to do this on the computer but um so it didn't work we'll, we'll have the computer next time for, yeah because we'll be at my home and studio we're up here in vermont doing some videos and hanging out with my family for thanksgiving uh would you use gamo air gun i have never heard of it um there's so much stuff i want to do it's hard to keep up with everything you know uh, East Coast Slingshot Tournament 20. Are you going to be there? I will try to always be at the East Coast Slingshot Tournament and some of the others as, as time goes on. Um, it's just sometimes things land on top of these things, uh, events I love to do. And I try to always plan around the East Coast Slingshot Tournament, though, because I love doing it. It's so much fun. And I got second place last time. I think it was sixth place the first season and second. So hopefully next year I want to bring home the win. I was only two shots away from winning. This year's East Coast Slingshot. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I shot 10 cans down in my speed shooting a whole bunch of times. And then when I did the speed shoot, I missed. Uh, I, I hit the can and it didn't go over. And then another time I hit it, uh, I missed. And that would have been my one. If I had knocked that one over, that would have given me nine points. And then one shot anywhere else during the course that I had missed that lost me in, uh, the points. that, so that would came close. Two shots would have won it, two basically. Two shots won. And Bill Hayes won. And... Uh, Eighth and Masters, the owner of Simple Shot. And so now they're making that Hornet slingshot that I shot that with into a, a signature slingshot made by Simple Shot. Hmm. Well, maybe we should do some slingshot shooting while I'm here, too. Yeah, no, we show will. Show me some tips. We maybe got the shooting range in the kitchen. little video there. Yeah, I want to do some slingshot shooting while I'm here, too. I'll get you into it enough that when you go home, you don't just stop doing it. You're like, there you we'll, we'll send you back with a target I mean, box. Everybody as a kid has a slingshot, but I've never shot with a guy of his caliber, so I should. Yeah. The Okay, so um, before we end it, if you leave a link, uh, com a comment. if you leave a comment, I'm watching every episode or some comment to that effect so that we don't have to remember it exactly. In all of the videos of the 30 Day Survival Challenge, I will, at the end of the series, I'll remind you one more time of the live stream, and then, like, a week later after all the episodes have aired, we will do the giveaway of $1,000, and or you can choose to have, like, the $3,000, one of each of all of my gear, like a full set of what all the kit that I take out with me on adventures, uh, minus the cameras and stuff, because then it <laughs> that get really expensive for me. <laughs> so, uh, so all of my gear that you see, you know, my pack, my, you know, the tools, stuff like that, all of, all of the full setup of the gear. And, uh, and we're going to start doing some drawings in December in some live streams and giving away, like, just single items. So if you're leaving that comment, you know, and you're like, oh, there's no way I'll ever win the thousand dollars, you may still have a chance. At winning like stuff like the wazoo necklace my grim card the grim fishing kit you know some something that uh, the sponsors have all been setting stuff in we're just trying to get that all organized and just start giving away to people that have left it in the comments below uh i'm watching every episode for those we're not going to research down to like see if everybody's watched we're going to pick a random video and pick somebody who left that comment or a comment to that effect in the video um so yeah and if you've been waiting for the gear video, it will be out when it's done. I haven't had a chance to... It's just a massive project. So I made a gear vlog. And all the sponsors that are linked in the description below, all these videos that you're seeing that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they're all doing like 20% off or more now through like Cyber Monday or or now and or Sunday Cyber Monday. So you, if you've seen something that you've liked, you can see that in the gear vlog. That's linked right below all of the YouTube videos that we're doing on this 30 Day Survival Challenge. You go to my website... When you click that link and you can easily scroll through all the products and it tells my thoughts on those products the products that i've decided never to carry with me again on adventures and what i've replaced them with and links to where you can buy them either on amazon or from the sponsors very easily laid out for you and yeehaw <laughs> uh, um if uh have, have you guys have been out to black friday uh we went out 
Well, Greg and I did some Black Friday shopping. Took the kids. Took the kids and went, took them to McDonald's and <laughs> we did the whole Black Friday. Good, the old yes. good Americans, good Americans <laughs> going out on Black Friday. Got the kids it, some oh. dolls and socks. And... <laughs> it wasn't very chaotic though, was it? No, it was pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. We, we went to Dick's Sporting Goods. Bought oh some, yeah, yeah, I like the sporting goods. Yeah, yeah. That's... And we bought some, bought some ice fishing gear, <laughs> some hooks, some, some hooks, some, yeah, <laughs> some glow worms and some. <laughs> little jigs and yeah so i bought a left-handed reel and had to go back and return it because they didn't have right-handed reels so. so should say sorry if we can't answer everybody's questions because they're just not all right time we're at three percent power here phone's three. dying this whole thing's been a fiasco yeah. but we'll do another live stream from my home in maine greg's gonna be here for two weeks we're gonna film some more videos do some more fun stuff we'll do a live stream before he goes one more time and um and thanks for watching thanks yeah, for watching thanks for uh, all watching we appreciate the comments and keep watching both our channels and uh, check out his channel stuff coming up yeah ovens rocky mountain bushcraft new episodes every monday wednesday and friday new episodes on my channel uh every tuesday thursday and saturday so his videos will be caught up to mine this coming monday and then mine will be out the day 14 on Tuesday and then his day 14 on Wednesday and they'll be like every other day like that right till the end of the end of the year and on until we're, every episode is aired and then we'll do a big giveaway so stay tuned thanks for watching and I think that pretty much covers it you gotta say Fowler out oh I was gonna know. I, was gonna know. <laughs> I can't leave without saying Fowler no, 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 out no, no. you, know, you gotta say that I'm just trying that's to think of anything good. else that we need to <clears throat> I think we pretty much covered it yeah and we will do this again shortly um so it's all we can do it's too bad the computer didn't cooperate but thanks for watching we'll do a better one I, I will get home and main uh before you head back and uh i think that pretty much wraps it up for us if you have more questions or comments for us we'll try to get back in here over the next uh 24 hours in the regular comments below the video you can leave a comment um and i'll count that as your i'm watching every episode if you just leave a regular comment or question that you're trying to uh ask us that we missed somehow in this whole scrolling through the phone thing to keep up with the live stream Appreciate you guys so much. I'm super thankful this Thanksgiving for all the views and shares and the just the wonderful things that you guys always have to say in the uh, the comments. It's just really great support that we've been getting from you on Positive. both. And just so many people going over and watching Greg's videos. Amazing how fast that channel has blown up because of you guys. Um, really appreciate it. Yep. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> like y'all like, like texan i've been watching too much hannah and her catfishing <laughs> they're the noodling I, i'm uh, trying to figure out if i want to do that someday or not uh thanks for watching see you guys all in the next one <laughs> fowler out i'm done Night. stick a fork at me i'm done <laughs>